excited for you guys to be here today. The Stitch TV is a monthly workshop that we host through Facebook Live in conjunction with the Singer Song Machine Company. We're thankful for the Singer Song Machine Company to sponsor us. Today we're featuring their heavy duty Model 4452 sewing machine. It's a beauty. And their Singer Start to Sew sewing kit, which has got lots of oh, wow. fabulous stuff inside of it. Love all those um, colors. We are red. going to upcycle a yes. men's shirt today into a vintage style apron, along with some other bonus things. And we have a special guest today, Amy Berrickman. And we'd love to have you introduce yourself. Oh. Amy and I have known each other for a long time. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Linsa. It's so much fun to be here. Yeah. Well, you know, I've been in the industry for a while. I founded the sewing pattern company Indigo Junction. Love that pattern. Um, and I now uh, have a chance. I'm really focused on my vintage content, sharing it, curating, giving people ideas on how to particularly upcycle heirloom textiles into modern makes and share the history of sewing and quilting just to build appreciation in our modern world. And uh, yeah, and the project today is based off of a pattern that's in my book, Vintage Notions. I love that book. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank I you. I had since it came out. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. And you know, it's month by month, Lisa. Yep. And each month there's a magic pattern. And a mag what's a magic pattern? It's a pattern that, um, you can cut without pattern pieces. So awesome. you use measurements and diagrams that are on the page yes. to cut whatever the project is. And there are 12 of them in the book. So one what, for each month. One for each month. You're right. <laughs> and there's some other, there's some aprons in it. Yes. In later chapters, maybe we'll have time to show those later. Um, so this book, obviously can be purchased um, wherever you buy books. Um, and this also, this if somebody wants the actual written instructions, yeah. we also have a PDF on amyberrickman.com. Yeah. So you get the PDF. Right. right. And that's under shop. There's um, PDF patterns under shop that people can find that. But I tell you what, today we're going to give people enough information that I, I don't know that they even need to right. buy They're the probably pattern. not going to need a pattern. So, really but if you process. are one that wants the details, you can look at the book or look at the find. You know, you can buy the pattern and it's immediate when you download Absolutely. it. So that's nice for people too. So let's let's get started talk about it. Yeah. yeah. So. I brought a sample back here and when we're talking about what kind of dress shirt that you can use for this right. project, this is kind of a, a little bit of a plaid. We also have some ginghams that I brought. Yeah. Um, I love gingham. I love this gingham. time of year. <laughs> and, um, and you know, look, I still have my savers tag on it. Yeah. You can find these at the thrift shop and you can find beautiful shirts with beautiful fabric. Um, and I like to always also let people, people think about if you want to personalize this for somebody, right. you can think about team colors. And so I thought about our Kansas City Chiefs. Our Chiefs. Now I think this is Navy, but I think we could get away with it <laughs> as a Chiefs apron. For sure. Or um maybe Jayhawks too. But <laughs> <laughs> they're not doing so well. We know we where you came <laughs> from. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so those are the type of shirts that you That's can fantastic. find. Or of course you can go in somebody's closet and find them there too. Right. So, so how do we construct it? I can show you that next if you Definitely. want me to. Let's get started. Um, this is the shirt. This is a, a gingham version. But what I'm showing you is that the front of your apron is actually the back of your shirt. Okay. So you that see the nautical label there? So this is the back that actually ends up becoming the front. Right. And then your, your front. Nautica, that makes a really nice apron. I know. <laughs> and isn't that combination of gingham fun? Um, Very nice. And then your these these two pieces are cut from the two fronts okay. of the dress shirt. And then we're just crossing them and tacking them um, to make the apron. And you will see when you're looking for a shirt, you see the center um, pleat. Uh -huh. Sometimes you'll find shirts with the center, or sometimes you'll find them with two sides. Right. And either or work fine. Doesn't matter. You don't now. Sometimes you have a little loop there. You want to cut that off. Oh, obviously. Um, I don't know. So I put my glasses in there. <laughs> hey, look at me. Yeah. That's a great idea. I knew you would have good 
good ideas today. Um, so now, why don't we get a tools are going to make We're going to need we'll some tools. Yes, we're going to need. Uh, it's really nice to have a nice clear ruler. Okay. And you can either use a rotary cutter or scissors to okay. cut. And I highly recommend uh, either chalk or disappearing ink pen because okay. we're going to be, like I said, drawing the the design directly onto okay. the shirt. Um, and then we're going to need some bias tape. Yes, and um, you can either. And these are some from my vintage I collection know. I Look brought. This amazing artwork on this. Isn't that fun? Of bias tape. I love them. I know. Um, in fact, I think that one I pictured in my book um, on the page about bias trim. But look at the primrose and that color. So, of course, we love the vintage because it's 100% cotton. Mm -hmm. But you can, of course, find bias tape in at a quilt shop, right. at a fabric store. And it's a very popular notion and so that, we really use double fold bias tape right and we can use quarter inch or, or, half, or inch. half inch so it doesn't right. matter whichever size we want to use do you want me to show you what they both yeah, look like let's do that let's okay. show how they look so different. so here is the half inch and you can really see it because yeah, of the that contrast really pops, it? so it's a little wider okay. so maybe if you're new to using bias tape you go for the wider for Good your idea for your first apron and then the the nautica shirt had the quarter inch on it which you can see it gives just a little um more refined finish very nice to the apron very nice. i like that and then i will show you too one um we did one with zigzag too on the bias that i have here so you can finish um, the bias with the zigzag. Gotcha. We so can talk about that. Straight stitch. Yeah, and which and sometimes so you can use other decorative stitches. You could. Zigzag, you? you could. We have Very a good. You could definitely. So you. Well, how about we start um, deconstructing? Absolutely. That's the fun part, right? Ripping yes. it apart. Well, so we're going to show you step one, and we're going to use this little board because we had some technical difficulties today. So we're going to not do a top down, but we're going to. We've got this awesome display board yes. to help you show things. It's not a problem. Not a problem. So this is um, our first step, and you can see what we did. We kind of have steps already in process. We cut off the neck, cut off the collar. Okay. Right? Yes. So you have the raw edge of the fabric. Love that. Um, we cut off a sleeve. There's a sleeve. Yep. Now remember, we're going to do something later with the sleeve. And we cut off the sleeve inside the seam. Correct. So there's no seam attached to the shirt. Anymore. Right. We left the, the flat felt seams okay. on the pieces. That's easy enough. Right. And then the last, oh, you got a pocket, but sometimes oh. you have a pocket you need to take off the front. Right? Right. Um, so you've just halfway taken that off. Right. Just take a seam ripper and rip it off. Right. Rip it the rest of the way off. Okay. Sometimes you want to spritz the, an iron and that'll help um, loosen your threads and your so shadow you will shadow. go away of your. Perfect. Um, well, that, and then what's the last step we do last, before we go here? Last step is the side seam. So you're going to be cutting down both side seams. And I went ahead and have an example here. You're going to want to. Um, the front of your apron, you want a clean raw edge. So um, you will want to cut so you have the raw, clean raw edge on the front and you keep you can keep the flat felt on the back because remember, you're gonna be slicing those straps. Because we're gonna cut that, that away as we go. Right, that piece will be, won't be there anymore. So that's actually the front of right. the shirt that we leave the seam allowance on because the back is now gonna become the front. Oh, of the apron. apron. Correct. Perfect. It's a little confusing, but I think <laughs> I think we're we've we'll got it. That. We've Very got good. it. Okay. So that's so now the magic of television. Yes. We're gonna go to step two. Sounds good. And we have the shirt that we have now taken the shirt and we have folded it yep. in half. Right. Long ways like this. That right. helps us get down the next center steps back. Easy. Yep. Okay, down the center back. Yep. So we're going to start on the back or start on the front? Um, we can start. We well, can start on the shoulder, aren't we? Yeah, let's start on the let's shoulder. Start it over. Okay. Here. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our um, ruler and we're going to mark one inch in from the neckline. From the neckline, one inch at the in. shoulder seam. Okay, and this is where you can determine how you want to draw your neckline. You can keep it um, a little higher. Or you could cut it a little lower, but you will then draw your neckline and be able to then cut that as you like it. And so even if I'm a person 
who likes a V-neck, but we're not probably going to get into that because it's hot, harder with bias. Right. You want to keep a curve, but you can change how right. much of the curve you want. I love a V-neck too. I know. Um, we'll show some other aprons yeah, that, perfect. that can be, and then we're going to go over two and a half inches from that one inch mark and mark another um, spot there. Got it. Um, and then we're going to go down here and mark an inch down from the arm, the bottom of the armhole. And we're again on the back of the shirt. Right. Exactly. Right. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, and that is where you're going to be able to draw this. Um, this will come down to your, your, um, you know, you'll cut here. Right. So, we're gonna, so you're going to kind of and then we're going to flip. Got yeah. It. Then you have this where you're cutting and then we can flip it. Yeah. So now we're going to flip it to the front side of the shirt to show you what we have to do on the front side. Of the right. Shirt. Right. The front, the front side side's shirt. a little more complicated. And again, we folded this in half where the button plackets are just lined up side to side so that the shirt is kind of folded in half. Right. So this is the tricky part, but that's it's a good. little tricky, not too <laughs> tricky. It's a little tricky because you're depending on the length of your shirt. Yeah. When you're when you're buying a shirt to fit a certain person, you want to keep kind of think about the size of that person. Okay. And make sure you bought you have a shirt that's a, maybe one size larger than that person. So if I normally buy a shirt that's a large, you recommend buy an extra large in order to make the same. Right. Right. Okay. And if you the way you size this apron up is you can extend the length of the straps. So the point oh, okay. being that you want to get the full length of your uh, cutting of your from your the front of your shirt. And in order to do that, sometimes when you're taking and measuring, let's say we're going from that two and a, that um, two and a half inch mark, uh -huh. and you're going to just go directly down kind of to the center of the bottom hem, maybe this isn't long enough. So you'll want to add, but you'll definitely, you can add an extra ruler. So you, oh, you I get your full straight line. So since this ruler is only 24 inches long, it probably won't take us to the bottom of the shirt. Right. So we and usually, so, I add another layer, another, you know, another ruler on top and extend it. Very good. So you um, take it to the bottom of the right. shirt. Got it. And then once you have that line, you can line up your ruler. So can we draw that, that line really quick to just kind of yeah, show? Sure. So we're drawing a line here. And how do we know how far from the button plaque if we want to draw that line? Or does it matter too much? It really doesn't matter too much. Okay. You're just kind of shooting for the, the bottom center of your... Gotcha. Really. And so we'd like... Right. You could also slide if you wanted to. You could come... So there we go. Okay. And so then... What's your next step you're talking about? Yeah, then we, so love these see-through rulers where you can find your two and a half inch mark, right? Yeah. And so you follow your, the line you already drawn and you'll get another perfectly aligned cutting line. Um, so you'll be left with this strip that is what you're going to cut out of your shirt for the straps of your apron. Right. Now, so we leave these two together when we cut so that we're cutting this side and this side at the same time to make sure they're accurate. They're I the like same. to. I That's like a to. great idea. Yep. That's a great I like idea. To. Okay. And remember what you said, you know, if you do keep the, um, just need this length for your right. straps, you have a nice finished edge here. It's on already the bottom. hemmed. Yeah. Very cool. We'll, okay. We'll show another method. So now we're going to show you after it's already cut so that you can see where we're at. Sounds good. So we have the back of the shirt. There's the right. there's the label on the shirt. Right. And we have cut off the collar. Yep. We have cut off the sleeves. We have cut off some extra here so that we have enough right. for our armholes. And we've cut off a little extra on the neck so that we have more room in our neck. Right. And then on the front of the shirt, which is now the back of the apron, that's the right. trickiest part. <laughs> you right. have cut the sleeves. So you yep. Have so there you can see that, that that will be, these will end up being our straps ah. once we add bias. And this is a little example of you of where we determined on this version that we might add a little extra um, length. So to, if I was a really tall cookie, which I'm not. You can add the length. <laughs> add length and to we, my straps. We did a, we did a French seam when we, when we, when we sewed that. Oh, to, that looks nice. To finish it. Yeah. That's something simple that's. You can Google to find out how to do that pretty, pretty easily. Yeah. Very um, good. So Very good. that is the before 
Okay. We add the bias. So, so we, and know. so that's all we do. Right. And now we add the bias, and then we have like one more step, and, right. and we're like done. Well, that right. was like super fun and super easy. Super fun and easy and amazing. Yep. Well, so let's talk about bias. Yes. Would that be good for us? To oh yes, bias? because we we collect it, we love <laughs> it, right? Yeah. It's kind of a, like a an addiction for us. When we use the, the we vintage, vintage, vintage packaging. packaging. Of well, in yeah. fact, since you brought it up, I'll get I'll quick show you a page in the Vintage Notions book that features vintage bias. Yeah. Um, and it shows some packages and um. Oh, death down here. Yeah. So this is a nightgown, and then with the scraps that are left over from making that the apron bias, you can actually. I brought a little project that actually is a flower applique and that was actually on um on that Little paper pajama yeah pack. on those pajamas so those are so anyway cute. keep every scrap and you know we'll find a, a purpose yeah. for it so oh yes pajamas you made yes got this bias is... here and bias here oh thank you for but that's a this. great place to use your scrap of your bias yes. you always end up with a package and you have like one foot left or a foot and a half left and Yes, it's just, okay, you know, something simple and everybody loves flowers. There's always a place to put a flower, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's okay. talk about how to do bias. Okay. So I'm going to, I brought some step by steps to make it easy for people to see what we've got here. Yeah. Let's. So that is. This might be a little tricky to show. So I'm going to pull our oh, board good out idea. here again so we That's can talk about idea. bias tape a little bit. So we have this white background for you to see it again. Super. Um, okay, so let's get, um, well, one the thing pocket. I will mention is you, if you take the pocket off yeah. and you want to reuse it, um, you can on the apron, maybe lower as a pocket, you know, for your recipe or your cell phone, yes. you can always add the bias trim to the top of oh, the pocket that'll tie it together that is, nice. yeah, that ties it together yeah. nicely. So here you can see the bias um, in a step by step. This is what your bias looks like. Um, it's this is a double fold, and one of the sides of the double fold is smaller than the other side or in width. And so, Linsa, we put the small side right sides together first. On, uh, first on the right side of the of the apron, and then we're going to. Um, stitch it which you can see we've got it stitched and what and what i call that is you kind of me. stitching in the ditch so i take so here's the bias that, that i think amy was showing you and if you open it up it actually opens up once then it opens up twice so it opens up really really wide and so you pick the narrow side first right because if you look at this and it might be hard to see this on camera but if you looked at this really close at your bias you'll see that one of these folds is narrower than the other side and it's just a scotch like right, what, a right. oh it's tiny or something. yeah it's hard, so it's to, hard to see yep so that side i actually a lot of times i will press that open okay okay and not so, so much have... that you can't see the the fold anymore but right. just enough that it kind of lays and my plan is is when i press it open that fold line that's already in the bias tape right. is my now my stitching line right so i'm going to call what i call stitching in the ditch so i stitch in the ditch of that fold line the, on the, would you say the narrow side first? Right. Stitch it down. And then after it's stitched down, you fold this over once. And then you'll turn this over. And we're turning it over to the right side of the of the garment, right? Right, right. We're going to fold this flap under like it already was. And then we're going to fold this over again. And now right. it's on top of the stitching because we did the narrow side first. Right. And so you know you'll be, it'll it'll be caught and it'll be perfect. Right. Um. So, yes. And there you can see. And... You know, you can use pins or the other thing we mentioned was you could use, there are things called like wonder clips that work well. So if you want to use those instead of pins to hold your bias tape on while you stitch, that's a, just a handy, yeah. wonder kind, clips handy are new have, notion. I like wonder clips when you have multiple layers because sometimes it's hard to pin through all those yes. layers. Yes. So wonder clips just holds it. I use a lot right. of one times wonder clips for, and Big, wonder well, clips well, is the name too. brand. So they're they're there are different brands out different that, brands that make clips. those clips yes they're awesome yep. okay yep so, so this that's... is kind of a mini lesson on how to put the bias right let me ask you a couple of questions is there a particular place on the apron that we should start well you wanna you want to start and this is an ex this is our um 
kind of in process sample. Uh, sample. Yeah. I'll show you. Well, I would say when you're doing this, you want to start in a place that's um, not not the center front of the neckline. You want to start in an inconspicuous okay. area, <laughs> maybe the side um, on the side on the back side of the arm armhole right. or um, you can, you know, that can be where you would begin. Um, or even, you know, if you want to start at the bottom, you know, starting oh, at the, the bottom, bottom of, of one strap. of the straps, yep. that makes sense too. Um, so you can see how we, we have, um, we're attaching this, the bias tape. Right. As all we along go. one side. So you're going to do the first stitch in the ditch around the whole around the whole thing, thing first. Right. That's a lot of bias tape. Yes. What did we say two packages. Two packages. Okay, two, two packages. packages of bias tape. Yeah. And you'll have to seam, you know, you'll seam your bias tape together, which is simple to do. You can see, you know, you'll on the bias connect it and you can easily do that. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and then, you know, one other thing is, you know, when you're finishing the corners too, you can, um, you know, you can, there are different techniques, but I like to just fold it under and then fold it over like that. So, it so you just it up have, inside. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And we're going to show you a trick on how to do this bottom. So that's why we mm -hmm. picked the bottom of the straps to start because you're not going to see this bottom. That bias tape end is going to be hidden up inside. We're going to show you that trick in a little bit. So yep. that works good. So you can see this is and then where you started we... stitching bias on over here. Yep. And I used the zigzag on this one. Good. Yep, we did. And you know, it it's not as apparent because it's not going over the edge. On the other one, we actually had it um, cross over the edge of the bias, but I okay. think, you know, it's your preference. Either way is, is going to work and look nice. They both look, and again, depending on your skill level, whether you want a contrasting thread right. that will really show up right. or you want a matching thread that will hide maybe right. any kind of little imperfection. So you're recommending if you're a beginner, you do a matching thread so I, that it doesn't show up. Right. Okay. Right. Very good. Um, and then here is that little technique we this talked is a about. Cool trick. So, you know, if you just have the raw edges and you don't want to finish your um, strap. strap off mm -hmm. square, you can just sew a seam like this, turn it right side out and tack right here. And you have this really nice, I like that, simple finish like to that. your, um, to your strap. We did do a curved um, yeah, show finish the one because that's what's on our Yeah, model, we did. We did a curve finish. This is a little trickier. So, um, but it can be done. Um, the, so there's what a curve would look like. And depending on if you hide the strap behind the um, apron. apron or you have it on the outside of the apron. And what you mean by that is if we turn this one around, the right. strap is actually applicate on top of right. the apron, but you could easily put the strap that like behind, behind the it. apron is right. what I hear you saying. Right. Right. Perfect. Which wouldn't, wouldn't and be. And it looks great either way. Yeah. It looks great either. Yeah. So now we have a finished with all the bias tape. Yes. And so right now, let me just ask you a couple of questions. This was the armhole before. Right. And so what you did is you made a gentle curve here. Right. To put the bias tape on. So it made it easier. Right. And right. the same thing with the bottom hem. Right. You right. just made a gentle curve so that you don't have right angles that yes. you happen to figure that is out very important as you're going through. I like this one green. too because as a man's shirt, it curves down on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And that nowadays Flattering. us girls like a little bit more coverage. So yeah. <laughs> it works. No, perfect. I love that. <laughs> the, the definitely curves always help. And I think this apron, the good news is it can it's a great apron for a guy too, though. You know, it's definitely yeah. um Unisex. Yes, totally. So totally you can, and the fun thing is if you have, I always say if you have grandpa's work shirt or dress Aww. shirt, you can, you know, make an apron out of it and not just send it off to the thrift shop, but have a, have a, a little heirloom. What a great remembrance. Yes. That is so cool. Yes. We have fun with yeah. That's what I love to do is find those textiles and, and re there, there's so much wonderful fabric out there, whether it be, you know, shirting at the thrift shop mm -hmm. or the dresser scarves that are embroidered. Right. I, I just those. upcycling those type of um, textile treasures is what I like to call them That's cool. is, um, is part of what I'm, I'm really excited about with, with what 
I'm doing futurized creative. I know. I love what she does. It's well, great. So tell me what I the last it. step on this. So you've got this you've got done, them. and yep. so you kind of yep. try it on. Is that yeah, what you do? Yeah, tie it on, and again, yeah, and then you're just going to be crossing your straps and and then tacking here at the bottom. I'll so you, show right here. You're just going to tack. So you decide how, is there like a rule of thumb at how far down you want it? Or do you need uh -huh. to try it on or does it really matter? Usually we do it like kind of right, right by that armhole curve. Oh, but it's, so like on here, yeah. you're talking about like right here. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. And, and again, if you feel you need more, double check it before you put your bias on it's to make sure if you need more length in your straps, that you add more length before you put your bias on. And so you typically need more length if you're taller. Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just because if you think I'm a about lot lighter that, than her. So. That, no. I don't know about <laughs> I that. I might need no, more straps no. than mine. No. It's and again, you know, the really buying the the bigger the shirt, the better for people usually. Um, you just want to kind of watch that yoke in the in the front um, and see what that looks like when you're out shopping at the, right at the thrift store if you're doing that or you're digging through somebody's closet and you <laughs> and I think I kind of like the ones with plates in them because oh, it I does do give you a little more room especially yeah. if you're making an apron for a woman yes that allows a little more room yeah it almost act, adds like it acts like a dart would um right and it I think is definitely a little definitely more comfortable and flattering with that so, so show me again some of the contrasting um I okay. like this one. So we're going to okay. show a couple more aprons, but at the same time, I wanted to bring oh, this one up again. Yeah. Just because we'll I love that. the fact that you used red. Isn't this bias yes. tape on that shirt? And look, here's the one that we talked about taking the, the pocket right. off. Right. And re the pocket on so that while you're yeah. cooking, you've got the pocket. And this one's must be American Eagle. It's got a little, little eagle. Oh, yeah. On. Yeah. You never know what you'll find those. Great little, yep. little tidbits yep. to add to it. And a lot of times this is a nice finished um, area on the shirt too. Inside, yeah. So it really has a good look um, kind of inside and out. Very good. And then this one, we used the black and this is just, you know, a plaid mm -hmm. with the black. Again, we added the pocket. Now, is there any men's shirts you don't, type of fabrics you don't recommend using? Well, if you like a heavier denim shirt or a heavier flannel shirt, probably wouldn't be ideal just because when you're, I think too, when you're, in a kitchen, you want a cool, comfortable right. fabric. Um, and it's bulkier than too for putting the bias on. So I'd keep it to a nice cotton. And you, oh, yeah. you no, can find so many gorgeous. You know what I thought of too is the fact that how cool would this be to make a little paint shirts for the kids? Oh. You get kids' shirts and do the exact yes, same thing. Yes, you can. Oh, a little do, smock. Just do yes. a little smock for kids, especially I when they're I, at my house, there's all kinds of arts and crafts going oh, on. Oh, so. I love that. <laughs> well, in my neighborhood, there is. I have a great time with my neighbors across the street yeah. and the kids we we do have to have done some crafting on the front porch i do want to show you too linsa that yeah. other these are the other aprons um in the book yes and these i love this contrast i know i know <laughs> that peach is isn't really that fun nice. and then okay. again we we've we've practiced this that i'm like did we actually talk about this in this version and tell people <laughs> so i think we might have but here's another um another fun look, look at, at the back of this the other patterns that you that can are make from shirts right these are both the magic patterns in the january chapter of vintage notions so um so you, know, you actually made a full yoke to go on the back and it just buttons so that probably right. that's really fun i like right. the way you have the contrasting bias yes. tape and the cool buttons and if you love bias you probably are one, like us and you love rickrack so yeah that's always could be it could be an option too now um i'm confused you would have so, to finish this yes so i love the fact that this strap on this one is actually the button placket that's right. on the front of the shirt right and then tell me why this doesn't have any straps on the top of it well in earlier years in the kitchen, the, the aprons were actually pinned, safety pinned to huh. clothing versus having straps. And I think it was a lot really for comfort that, you know, having that binding around your neck isn't ideal. Right. And um, in fact, that reminds me, I can show you a couple other aprons, bias aprons from the Vintage Notions book yeah. that um, one of them is similar like that. So this one. Yep, that one has the, this is another one that's um, in the book, and it has the over-the-shoulder strap. Oh, um, that's, a, that's an apron. <laughs> yeah, this is, yes, this is just, this is full coverage and Look big pocket. pockets. 
so this um and actually i think this is this was this i do this have a fabric, fabric line. No, well, no, this is from my Vintage Made Modern fabric oh, line okay. I did a few years okay, ago. Good, In yeah. fact, we're going to show another version of it. So um, That's cool. throughout That's my cool. Vintage Notions book, I have vintage textiles on the pages. Right, right. And we actually made developed a fabric line based on the illustrations from the Women's Institute and the vintage fabrics, That's which nice. we both love vintage right. fabric, too. So, um, so that it has That's the cool. straps. And the black bias is kind of interesting. Oh. You know, um, I forgot to ask if anybody has any questions or comments. We oh, have yes. the singer experts are manning the show as long as well as some vintage motion experts. So right, right. if you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comments of Facebook. Right. And Amy and I'll do our best to address them as we go through. Yeah, uh, we'll go back where through. You're from, all that good stuff. I know we didn't get a chance to to do all the live stuff. We had to jump right into the project. We didn't want you to miss anything exactly. related to the project. So this, this is, is fun. well, and this is one that doesn't tie at the neck. It lays nicely on the neck. So this is another pattern that's one of the magic patterns right. in the Vintage Notions book. And I wanted to share that because it shows you. Keep in mind, you can purchase bias or you can make bias. Mm -hmm. There are many different tools that help you make bias. And, and I think- Singer has a really awesome bias tape foot that you oh, can goodness. buy to put on almost any machine to help you as you sew this on. So it already folds it up for you versus the oh, pre-folded awesome. when you buy it. So awesome. order one of those. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. And these are the graphics from the Women's Institute. Oh, how nice. And did I mention that the woman who founded the Women's Institute her name was Mary Brooks Picken, yeah. and she wrote the Singer Sewing Book. Oh my God! So this is this like is karma. A, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's exciting to think about. And this that is book. Singer's hundred and seventieth year. Oh, wow! So there's some great, great history. Year. Yeah, wonderful history. I love so, Singer. I've yes. been born and raised on Singer. So. Well, and I do, I did a Facebook Live last Friday and shared more about Mary Brooks Picken mm -hmm. and the Singer Sewing Book. And I put a blog post up yesterday showing some pictures of oh, my good. vintage Singer Sewing Books. So, that's you so you might want to, if you're interested, if check sure. it out. And um, yeah. And now, I so we talked about a couple bonus projects oh, yes. out of the same shirt. Yes, we and don't want to forget I'll those. Say is that we we uh, we try not to waste anything. No, use every scrap. Those of us who are sewers, we can say we're in some capacity hoarders too. Yes. But <laughs> we save everything. We save everything. <laughs> you know, it's not newspapers, penny quilts, but, and, yeah, no, but fabric, 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 fabric and notions. Right. So I want you to show a couple of cool okay. things. You have this really fun. Um, right. Bracelet. Let's start yes. with that one first, yes. and then I'm gonna. Well, I'm gonna step out of the picture really quick to find to get the other bonus okay. project that for some reason we don't. Okay. Have sitting here, but um, let me get that. Okay. While you, while you start that, I'm okay. Gonna get that. This, so you have two sleeves that are gonna be left over from your shirt, and I know we've talked about all different kinds of ideas of what to do with the sleeve. There's the mm -hmm. one and look what I did with this sleeve, Linsa. I, I cut off the cuff because like you said, we love half sewn projects right. and this is actually a full sewn project. So what my idea was, I love mother of pearl buttons. That's one of my favorite vintage notion. So I had a mother of pearl um, buckle. Bu buckle and I just trimmed that cuff and then I made myself a little uh, bracelet. Oh what gosh. do you think? That is so clever. So, you know, that's a simple way. And you could take that cuff and you could, you could embellish it mm -hmm. with, you could do fabric manipulation. There's all sorts of things you that's can do with nice. those cuffs. And that's, all that is is you just cut off the cuff on right. the bottom. Yeah. You add the buckle and you just maybe slide it, slide slid it through. Over. Oh, that was slide. Yep. Way Look, too I have another one of my buckles I brought just to show easy. you way way too easy and and we took another shirt right just the sleeve. My, just the sleeve open up the seam okay and you have um quite a bit I of fabric. if i did it on the other oh, one here this one's already opened up i think um my bad so no problem so and you have all this fabric yeah look at that <laughs> and look at that fun plaid so you could make you could make face masks mm -hmm. um and again if you're you're doing maybe the pleated version. You could use your leftover bias and it yes. could become your straps. We just did 
this version where we added elastic. So you put it around your yeah. head and, and, and we have that. this pleated pattern on the Sewing Labs website. Oh, so perfect. you can find the instructions for this on the Sewing Labs website. So that right. should be real easy. Yeah. And then I, you did the same thing here. Yeah. And this one, we actually made the bias out of the shirt um, instead of using. And we had one more version that is the sh what I call the shaped mask um, style. So you, there you can see um, you could also do the shape style. And this is just out of the sleeves that we did yeah. the sleeves. Yeah. So you, you're using every bit every of that bit shirt. Of that shirt. Yeah. Um, Waste not what not. Nope. That's exactly <laughs> what's old is new again. Wow. We right. thought about that you can also make some fun little gift bags. You can mm -hmm. just sew the bottom. and this. I've seen wine bags. Wine People bags. make wine bags out That'd of the sleeves. Cute wine bag. Just tie some ribbon around the top yep. and just sew off the bottom. That would be really sweet. That'd be really good. Yeah, and again, like teen colors. This looks like the colors from my kids' high school. Yeah, um, Oak Park you High know, School in this, Missouri or whatever your yep. high school is. And yep, <laughs> County Mission. So, yeah, we there's... There's so many fun things you can make with with thrift shop yeah. finds and um, and I'm really excited. There's so many projects in your book, Vintage Notions, that specifically is upcycled. Right. So great ideas and and your blog, you do a lot of upcycles. And we do. Your website has lots of different references to right. go for. So we're really a lot, excited about that. And speaking of like vintage notions mm -hmm. and mother of pearl buttons, I've just had a lot of fun uh, with doing some research on mother of pearl buttons. And um, so that's one of my recent posts too, but it definitely, there's so much creativity that we can find using fabrics that really are, you know, just in our closet or, you know, ask your friends say, yeah. Hey, don't, don't give those shirts to the <laughs> thrift shop. Let me look at them first. So yeah, for sure. I, uh, um, yeah. So, Again, I think we gave you some really good, clear instructions. Obviously, Singer is going to post this, repost this Facebook Live on their website and on the YouTube channel. So you should be able to look at it. Right. And so you can recreate it and make it happen. Um, if not, you can go to amyberrickman.com and look right. at the information there. Um, and again, we we were featuring, we made a lot of these steps with the Singer Heavy Duty 4452 oh. sewing machine. And... We are using this wonderful new Singer uh, sewing kit that's got thread and tapes and zippers mm. and hem gauges and all kinds of stuff in it. And so that Fabulous. makes it really well and really easy. Fabulous. So what, where will we follow you at if we want to follow you, Amy? Well, you know, I've got a few spots. We have a Vintage Made Modern Facebook group mm -hmm. that people can join. And that's where I go live on noon, uh, or excuse me, 1 o'clock on Fridays, one o'clock central. And then um, Instagram, Amy Berkman Studio. Okay, good. I also have a newsletter. And you, if you sign up for that newsletter, you'll actually get a free magic pattern. One of Mary Brooks Pickens magic patterns is one of the, um, the freebies that comes with signing up. Um, and I share a lot of my upcycling ideas yeah, in my do. newsletter. I try to give a lot of value if you're um, sub a subscriber that way. And, oh, YouTube channel. I do have a YouTube okay. channel, Amy Berrickman. And, um, yes, Amy, can I come back again? Sure. Okay, somebody's <laughs> asking if yes, I can. we have several plans for right. this year, well, so it'll be good. It's so convenient, and it's so much fun because I've seen the sewing labs from the beginning and I've seen their location, how they've grown and I just see the wonderful work that they're doing. So anything I can do to help Thank promote you. the love of sewing here in Kansas city and really, you know, Worldwide. internationally. International. Yes. Sewing is yes. a oh, language. speaking of us, uh, the sewing labs, I'm excited because I'm going to be at an event making her Ma story. Making her, her story. So it's like history, but it's her story. Right. Um, coming up on May 21st and 22nd, we have an in-person and a virtual ticket. And Amy, again, is going to be another one of our guest um, workshops. So you can come see her live. Right. Or you'll, if you buy a virtual ticket, she'll have some other fun projects right. that you'll be able to learn from her. Right. Um, but that is, again, on May 22nd. Tickets are on sale now. You go to the Sewing Labs website and go to the Making Her Story page. Um, and we're really excited about that and then we'll be back doing our facebook live with the singers uh singers <laughs> the singer <laughs> machine company in april in april is actually on earth day 
So oh, tonight, that's the exciting. And Robert will be back with one of our students and teaching you how to do some some more grain type sewing. It's nice. not upcycling, but it's some grain, some reusable sewing. So we're really excited about that. But that definitely. Fabulous. So this has been awesome and great. Well, do we have any other questions that we need to answer for anybody? No? All right. Well, it's Thank been great. Thank in. you. Good to it's, have uh, you here today. Good to, good to be here. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. You have a great afternoon. Talk to you later.